Hello, today we're gonna to be baking scones. Sourdough scones. I guess you wanna get really specific, sourdough discard scones. Um, I've said before, I have my sourdough starter. It always needs fed, which means you always have discard and you just don't wanna throw it away. You need something to do with it. Scones are fantastic. So today we're gonna to be making, set you up here. Um, I had some cherry chips and some cream cheese chips and left over from another project. And I, I will tell you, anytime I see new chips, I always buy them. So if there's new flavors, I gotta get it. Uh, which is how I came by the cherries, uh, just in time for Valentine's Day. But both of these are actually fairly sweet. So I've added in some almond chunks, just a rough chop on some almonds. Um, just to break that up a little, make it not quite as sweet. I thought about walnuts, but I didn't want too much bitter since I already have my sourdough starter. So it's not gonna be as sweet as a classic scone. I like it that way, by the way. Um, but what we're gonna do is take two cups of flour, otherwise known as 280 grams or 10 ounces. Put that into a bowl. Yeah, I know it was already in a metal bowl. This one's wider. Uh, <laughs> baking powder. We've got a tablespoon of baking powder. Mix all that in. Half a teaspoon of salt. And all this is just going into this bowl, just the dry ingredients. I've got a half cup of sugar. This is sucanat sugar. You can see it's kind of larger, grainy. If you don't have sucanat, because it's a little hard to find where I'm at, um, and you don't want to order it online, which I did, you can also use coconut sugar, a little easier to find. Lacking both of those, you could use sugar in the raw, would work okay. Um, brown sugar, but you probably want to mix it, brown and white sugar, but really any sugars you like. I just like the darker because it has a richer flavor, had a little bit of a caramel to it, and I like having that in here, it gives it a little more depth. So in the sugar, it goes in the bowl. And if you have any chunks in your sugar, just break them up a little bit. So we've got all of that. We're gonna mix all that together. And then we're gonna add a stick of butter. You want your butter to be really cold. Um, the recipe I'm using actually calls for cold, I mean frozen butter, but if you ever tried to cut a whole stick of frozen butter with one of these, you, you're gonna bend it all over the place. To get around that, what I did was I thawed my butter out enough that it was cuttable, cut it in nice little chunks, and then stuck this back in the freezer to chill that back down, because you do want it nice and cold so that you get the chunks in there rather than having it mush up. So once your chunked up butter is in there, you're just gonna cut it in. And see, this is why I needed a, a bowl with a bit of a wider reach so you can cut your butter in. And you're gonna cut it in until it's about, they say the size of a pea. Most of every recipe will say the size of a pea. Um, you can work it in with your fingers, but the trick on that is that the longer you touch it, the warmer it gets, and you don't want your butter to be warm. So this can take a little while as you just work all that butter in. So I'm gonna work on that, and I'll show you when we get back. All right, so I got the butter cut up. You can still see chunks of butter. It looks kind of rough sand in there. And that you want that. You want to still be able to see your butter. If you can't see your butter anymore, you've probably worked it in too much or it's gotten too warm. Um, you can try to fix that. Just chill the whole thing down. 
to get that butter into more solid pieces again. But you want it because it has these little pops of the butteriness in your dough when you're done. So now that all the dry ingredients are mixed together, we're going to put in the add-ins. And I've gone off recipe here a little bit because I've made this recipe before. I know it can take it. I did a half cup of cream cheese flavored, a half cup of cherry flavored, and a half cup of almond bits. Normally, you just want a cup of mix-ins. I've done a cup and a half, but like I said, I've done this be recipe before, so I know it can take it. The first time you do any recipe, follow it. Do whatever the recipe sets. So you can see how it behaves. After that, you'll know what it's like and what it can take, and then you can really play with it. So right now I'm just working those mix-ins into my dry ingredients. And then over here, I've already mixed together my wet ingredients. This is a half cup of um, sourdough discard, a quarter cup of heavy cream, um, which is also 60 grams. Half cup of sourdough is equivalent to four ounces or 112 grams. If you don't have one, get a kitchen scale. Because especially for wet ingredients, think about when you pour cream into your half cup measure, that's great. But then when you pour it out again, you've got a ton of cream still stuck to your measure. It's a lot easier if you know the weight. You can just do it by weight. You don't have any of that loss that comes from having to go from container to container and container. So I've mixed the 112 grams of sourdough discard, 60 grams of heavy cream, beat in one egg, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now the way I measure vanilla, you've made it where you need to be when your measure starts overflowing. So it's always a little extra. It's like if you were doing a heaping teaspoon, except that you can't do that because it's liquid. So you just wait till it overflows. So into this bowl, I'm gonna add my dry ingredients. The recipe says to add the liquid to the dry, but I can scrape all the dry out of this bowl and back to the, you always leave things if you try to move liquid from one to another. And you don't wanna mix it too much. You're just getting everything coated. And for this, I generally start with a spoon or a spatula or something because it, of course, starts off really wet. But partway through, you're going to need to get your hands in there because it gets too thick for what you've been working with. Just get off the bits that are stuck in there and then just get your hands in. Now you don't want to overwork this, but you do want it to stick together and it will. You'll be looking at it going, this is never going to hold together. It's too dry. It's too crumbly. Yeah, it will. You just need to work it. And don't be afraid of working it enough. When you get warnings on recipes that will tell you, don't overwork it. You have to be careful. Don't overwork it. That's true, but don't let it scare you. There's... It's just as bad to underwork. So when you've got most of it done, you can turn it out. And I'm actually going to turn it out onto the pan I'm gonna bake it in. And I just use a half sheet tray, nothing fancy. Because you don't really need to do much after this stage if you've got it mixed good enough. Just wanna scrape your bits out. Make sure there's not a ton stuck in your bowl. And you see that it's basically come together. You work it enough so that it basically comes together. 
And then you're just gonna press it down into, you're looking for 12 inch circle. So, and when you do it, you're gonna say, well, that, that looks pretty thin. It might, but don't worry about it. For that matter, don't worry too much about the circle. And you know you're about there if you use this kind of pan when you start hitting the sides. So when your circle gets out that far, well, that's about as far as you can go. So you must be there. Now, we're gonna take this and put it in the freezer. Remember earlier we put the butter in the freezer. You want this to be cold so everything holds its position when you bake it. So we're gonna put this in the freezer for five to 10 minutes. Then when it comes out of the freezer, you're going to brush it, the whole top, with some heavy cream. It'll give it a nice finish. Uh, if you want to, you can add more sugar on top, like the Sucanat sugar if you use that, or this would be a great time for sugar in the raw. Something that has that nice crystal structure that will also give you a little crunch when you bite into it. Be really tasty. So in the freezer for five to 10 minutes, pull it out, brush it with cream, sprinkle the sugar. Then you're gonna bake it in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes or until the edges just start to turn. Um, you don't have to do this next step, but, but I like it. Before I bake it, after I've brushed it and after I've done the sugar and all that, I'm gonna cut it into the wedges that I want. And that's as many as you want it to be and cut it like a pie, basically. And you don't separate it, you just cut it because that's gonna give you a prettier finish and easier separation when you're done baking. So, into the freezer, then it's gonna get its cream and sugar and sliced and into the oven. 400 degrees, 20 minutes, and we'll have a look at it when it's done. All right, my scones are out. They've had mad 10 minutes, closer to 15 maybe, to cool. Um, if you are taking these anywhere, going to a party or a picnic or whatever, you want to let them cool all the way before you try to separate them, take them apart. Because technically, any, they and any baked good is still baking while it's warm. There's still a process happening there. So if you try to undo them early, they're going to be gooey. You'll think this has to be underdone. It's kind of doughy inside. It's not. It's done. It just... It isn't. It needs that time to cool down when it finishes what it's working on. I'm not that patient. These aren't going anywhere, so I'm gonna give them a taste. So there they are when they're out, all pretty. You can see the sparkle a little bit of the sugar on top. And I'll just lift one out. And you can see it's all patterned in through there gorgeous. Like I said, it looks a little doughy, but that's because this is cool enough to touch. Um, but really, I should give it more time, except that I really want to try it. So let's have a taste. Yeah, I was right. The almond really helps. The chips that are in here are fairly sweet. And you catch them, but that's okay. That's a good thing. Because you're using the sourdough discard, it's kind of tangy, kind of tart. And then with the almonds also in there, it really cuts that sweetness down. If you didn't have those, I think it would be overpowering with just having the chips in there because they're so sweet and then you wouldn't have any of that tang. But with the sourdough discard, with the almonds, this is awesome. Um, but this recipe is actually 
Also really, really adaptable. You can do a cup of whatever you want to mix in. I've done dried fruit before, which is great. Always remember to soak it a little bit so that it's a little soft, otherwise you just get hard chunks. Um, nuts, like you saw, you can put chips in. You could just do chocolate chips and have chocolate chip scones. That also would be awesome. It's a really, really adaptable recipe. So, um, this recipe I actually got from, make sure I get it right, Farmhouse on Boone from Lisa Bass. So, Lisa, thank you so, so much for this recipe. It's awesome. I make it all the time. And as you can see, it came out beautiful. So thank you, thank you so much. And come back to watch again next time. See you guys.